in the passing of the aunt to Gladys Jefferson, Sister Gladys Jefferson. We send our deep sympathy to Mother Alice Cleveland in the passing of her sister, Sister Annie Dean Johnson. We extend our sympathy to the Tuck family, Brother Robert Tuck and his entire family in the passing of one of the cousins, one of the relatives of that family, the Tuck family. We pray for Brother Jamal Stinnett, the son of Sister Ethel Hughes. Jamal is still in the Huntsville House Hospital, CCU, bed 17. Let's keep Jamal in our prayers. We pray for all the known sick and shuddered members here at Union Hill. Ask you, God, to touch them. I'm praying a special prayer and ask you to be praying with me. I'm having my brother in law, Brother Sherman Glover Jr., a very sick man, and we pray that God will touch his body and keep him. We have been given a card of appreciation from Sister Mueller Tony and the Edwards family. It's the dearest family in Christ. Thank you so very kindly for the expressions of love, sympathy, and patience. Please continue to pray for the Tony Edwards family. Thank you very much. We thank God and we are yet praying for the Tony family. Amen. We extend our greetings to our own church diaconate. The deacons of this church, you're doing a wonderful job. Every week, you're here on Saturdays taking care of the church stewardship and finances, keeping this church afloat, doing those things that are required of you. And on the same note, we want to thank all our members of Union Hill. You're being very faithful. Thank you for coming and uh, bringing your tithes and your offerings on Saturdays. And you've been diligent uh, so that all the things and the ministers of this church can continue on and your church can just continue to be blessed in this time of pandemic. So again, we thank all the members of Union Hill. We greet our young members. Uh, we've heard from several of them, and they say how they miss being here at the church. And it's a blessing for the little ones to say they miss church. Amen. We miss you, and we love you, and we miss you. We pray uh, for you as uh, your own diligent elder, Ellis has just prayed for you going back to school. We salute you. And we pray that you will be saved no matter whether you're at home studying or at school. We want you to uh, really succeed. And we thank God for you. And we pray that you'll have a wonderful uh, year ahead. Amen. God bless you. So again, we welcome you out uh, on Facebook and YouTube. We welcome you to Union Hill CPCA. It's one of the 19 churches in the Huntsville Presbytery. And to me, I'm a little bit biased, but to me, it's the best church in the Huntsville Presbytery. We just thank God for you. So at this time, we'll continue our order of worship. Amen.
to entitle this message from God, Job's Eternal Reference. Job's Eternal Reference. The reference that I'm talking about is the one that Moses prayed to in the 90th Division of Psalms, verses 1 and 2. And Moses fervently prayed with revelation knowledge. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, forever thou formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Amen. Job's eternal reference. The new college edition of the American Heritage Dictionary defines reference as meaning one who can offer information or recommendation. It is a statement of character, ability, dependability, of qualifications. Job took the witness stand according to Psalms 16 and 19. Job declared, Behold, my witness is in heaven and my weapon is on high. I'm talking about Job's eternal weapon. David recorded the same eternal reference in the 89th Division of Psalm, verses 34 to 37. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever. And his throne, as before me, it shall be established forever, as a moon, and as a faithful witness in heaven. I'm talking about Job's eternal reference. The reason or purpose that I'm preaching this message today here at New England is because Christians need reminding. Amen. We need to be reminded in times like these that Christian suffering is synonymous with Christian service. I better say that again. Christian suffering is synonymous with Christian service. Being a Christian does not exempt us from the trials and the tribulations of this life. Amen. Being a Christian does not exempt us from sickness and disease. Being a Christian does not exempt us from the coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic. And the purpose of this message serves to remind us the suffering of Job was synonymous with the suffering of Jesus Christ. The main concern or the purpose, the problem in the book of Job, is why do the godly suffer? Why do the godly suffer? You might be asking yourself in 2020, why do the godly suffer? You might be asking during this time of pandemic. You might be undergoing a personal trial, a crisis in your life. But I do the best in service. Why do the godly suffer? I remind you, my dears, of Psalms 34 and 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Amen. Amen. I remind you again of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 
considered my servant Job. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. He said that Job is a perfect and an upright man. One who avoids evil and honors God. God gave his word as a reference on Job's behalf. God was recommending Job to be tested by the worst and the first of this. God recommended Job to stand Satan's test. God had somebody that he knew had so much faith and trust in God that he would be able to stand and fight out for the devil through him. And we got to be able to understand the devil will throw all kinds of mess at us. Amen. God sometimes has to ask himself, who will I send? And who shall go for us? There's a big difference. Ah, uh, so the portion and those who went and those who God sent. Many Christians say, I believe God and Jesus Christ. Most of us say, say that. Amen. We all say that. Many of us say that. There are many Christians who cannot stand Satan's test. Some of us cannot even stand the test of each other. Let's all say this test.
the gods represent acknowledgement of, 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 of Job by his uh, assessment of Job based on Satan's estimate of human nature. Satan said, yes, I, I, I've been checking Job out. I, I've seen Job. I know about Job. But guess what? Does Job fear you for naught? Does Job fear you altruistically? Does he do it for nothing? Uh, does he do it because he don't want anything from you? You have blessed Job immensely. You have exalted him. Uh, he's a rich man in us. You have blessed the work of his hands. His substance is increased in the land. He has it materially. He has it physically. He's well protected. He lives in a hedge community. He has all kinds of agricultural uh, livestock, camels, sheep, oxen, donkeys. He has well manicured valleys, fertile valleys at that. He has uh, a fine paper, rooted wine. Who has given him ten wonderful children? He has servants that uh, honor him as their employer. You have hedged him from sickness and disease. No wonder. You have shielded him from trouble, drama, and, and trauma in his life. No wonder. Why wouldn't he serve you? I tell you what. Put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has, and I declare. Oh, he's praising you right now. Every time he's around, he said, Hallelujah. Every time he's around, he said, Praise the Lord. Everything's going his way, and he can praise you. His children are going away. He prays for his wife. God. His own, they are in good harmony with each other. Who wouldn't praise you? You bless the household. The Lord said to Satan, Say, wait a minute. I want you to do something. Take away what he has. Subtract what he has. Take it away from him. I declare the, the man will push you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has in your power now. Starting right now. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So the Bible says, Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. You see, that was all the time he was going to get a blessing from God again. You see, when you're in the presence of the Lord, you're blessed. When you're in the house of the Lord, you're blessed. Amen. I know that because David understood how he felt when he couldn't go to God's house. That's right. But when God let him know, I can be okay with me again, David said, I was glad when they said right. Amen. Amen. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You'll miss your water to your way, my brother's girl. Amen. Yeah, Amen. long, long as the pastor is doing his job in your heart, you okay.
of us. Satan uh, rushes us uh, in the down times in our lives, but we can't realize why we receive bad power. Your grandchildren. What would you have 
a long way from home, disconnected. It's amazing. I don't know how I would handle that. Can you imagine? Somebody out here might be saying, not just in this sanctuary, but on Facebook, somebody might be saying. You might be saying, even right now, I'm going through something in my life right now, Pastor. I'm going through and I'm dealing with some, 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 some stuff uh, uh, and, and some issues right now that I've been praying about. And sometimes I have to make myself smile but you can cry. I have to make myself go on. Sometimes I, I don't feel like putting one foot in front of the other. Sometimes I don't feel like getting out of the bed. Sometimes I want to pull the cover over my head. But there's something inside of me. Say that. Telling me to go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Deep down inside of me. Those storms kept on coming in Job's life. And Job, brothers and sisters, reached down into the recession of his inner resolve. And God gives all his children something uh, deep down within that is beyond the shadow of circle. You've got to lock out into the deep. And Job's adversity made him dig deep. And Job became a sick during Satan's second pass. And Satan said to God, after Job passed the first test, uh, skin to skin, yea, all that a man had to give for his life, put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and uh, he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. You can't do wrong in the presence of the Lord when you realize you're in the presence of the Lord, when you recognize God's presence. You feel blessed. But when you leave the presence of the Lord, all kinds of stuff can break Amen. When he went away from the presence of the Lord the second time, the Bible says, when he went away from the Lord the second time, in the permissive will of God, Satan, uh, yet he began to work on Job, uh, and he struck Job with so far from the soul's foot to the crown, and Job bore his burden in the heat of the day. Y'all don't hear me. I believe Job must have used some self talk during his time of adversity. Job's friends, Elphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, no doubt asked Job. How you doing, Joe? And perhaps Joe said, I'm all right. How you doing, Joe? I'm fine. I'm okay. And Joe wasn't fine. But perhaps that was his response. That's the way it is in life sometimes, beloved. You have to do some self-talk and say to yourself, it's going to be all right. No matter what you're going through right now, you've got to know that you know that you know that you know when you know God is going to be all right. Amen. It's going to work out fine if you know God. Amen. God's going to bring you through. Yes, he is. Job demonstrated absolute trust in God. You see, it wasn't God uh, bringing the storms in Job's life. God allowed the storms. 
demonstrated absolute trust in God. He overrode and he rent his mantle and he shaved his head and he sat upon the ground and he worshiped God. Y'all don't hear me. Job acknowledged his need to worship God. Job desired to worship God. He desired to worship God during his sickness. He desired to worship God before God favored him with grace. Job worshiped God when he felt like goodness and mercy had taken a little backwards from his life. Y'all don't hear me. He desired to worship God when his friends doubted his innocence. Job desired to worship God when he felt like he was all by himself. Job desired to worship God when death was knocking on his door. Job worshiped God during his bereavement when his children were dead and when his wife and her sympathetic appeal to him.
don't know whether I can survive the storm, but I believe with Jesus' help I can stand the test. When God gets through with me, this is not the finished product, but when God gets through with me,
Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a wonderful day of the Lord.